Welcome to System Shock 2. In this update, we will tackle the depths of engineering and explore the cargo bays. This is probably one of the most expensive areas of the game, so let's get right on it. Uh, can somebody turn the lights off? Do you not trust the feelings of the flesh? Our biology yearns to join with yours. We welcome you to our mass. But you puzzle us. Why do you serve our mother? How can you choose cold metal for the splendor of flesh? But you fear us. We hear your thoughts, and they rage for your brothers you believe dead. But they are not. They sing in our symphony of life. We offer another chance to join us. If you choose to lie down with the machine, we will rend your heart and put you separate from the joy of the mass. Ah, oh, phew, I'm back here. So that's the many that they're talking about? Oh my god, yeah, I really need to press on. I really don't want to be one with this thing. Alright, your mother said hi, so you have to go back to her right now. Bad monkey! They aren't making this easy for us, are they? I miss you. I know it's stupid, but I do. I think I'll wallow in self-pity for an hour or so, and then write you again. Figures. I have to travel 67 trillion miles to meet a man. Once you're transferred to the Von Braun, everything will be better. I'll be better. I promise. Great. Someone's coming. Counting the seconds. Aww, oh, they like each other. How cute. And as you might have noticed with the date on the log, that happened before all things went to hell. I wonder if we'll hear more about these guys. So we have to go look for... Oh, we have to go look for a camera, but... Uh, ah, stop panicking! Okay. The thing is, with the cameras, you always have more time than you think. So, like I tried to say earlier, our matter of affair will be to go look in Cargo Bay 2 in order to try and find that Sanger girl who supposedly got there and knows the code to the engineering fluidic control axis. And then we'll finally be able to get that nasty radiation out of the way. And speaking of nasty radiation, we might as well make these barrels explode. If they explode while you're around them, well, you're just gonna take a heavy dose of radiations. At least the game is kind enough to put a whole lot of explosive barrels right next to the turret, so therefore it's pretty easy to deal with this one. But be careful to not get shot by it, because as you see, they still hurt a lot. Alright, to hell with this bastard. I'm just gonna show him how hard a psionic person can wrench. That is, provided that you stop moving. Uh, oh great, there's also a monkey as well. They really got their command center sealed in pretty tight. Anyhow, while we're cleaning the place, I might as well take the time in order to provide my impressions concerning this one part of the game. Honestly, to me, the engineering is probably the weakest part of the game, at least on a gameplay standpoint. There's a couple of things that it does really well. Oh, I completely forgot to research this organ that I found in the previous update. But right now I'm gonna need a chemical that I don't have access to right now, so it's kind of a moot point. But for a lot of players, the engineering deck will be the part of the game where they'll be stuck. Because if you're not prepared for it, it can be very easy to get stuck on it because you won't have the resources handy to fight the enemies and you'll have to use tactics that pretty much are not intuitive at all or are pretty hard to pull off. And for the most part, I'm gonna have to pull every single one of them due to the build that I have. With only one exception, Upside Agent will have a really hard time on this part of the ship. 
So we just collected our first anti-personal bullets. You use them with the pistol or the assault rifle, which we will get much later into the game, and these work really good against organic targets, but really poorly against robots. Not me. No way. They're not gonna get me. They're not gonna change me. Rachel? Kids? I'm sorry. So this is the kind of unity that the many want to achieve? Having people that want to kill themselves over being transformed? Good job, guys. So as you might have guessed, this is the part of the game which finally start acknowledging the fact that all the crew members who attack you are all people who were once human but were infected by whatever thing took over the ship which was found on Tau City 5. But yeah, whenever you go onto this disc, going here will be your first order of affair because this is where you will find out the respawning machine as well than two of the upgrading stations. At this point of the game, this is usually where you'll start seeing stations that are scattered all over the place, instead of having all four of them all at the same place. And finally, the respawning station is especially useful because this is probably the first legitimately hard section of the game. This deck has so many things that can go and kill you and, uh, why was I using agility in order to act that terminal? That's not how it works. Oh well, it's time for you to see how hard it can be to hack a security station. Security system offline. Okay, so why earlier I had trouble hacking a security station with 25% of difficulty, and now I pretty much succeed effortlessly when it's 60% and 3 high snows. But yeah, notice how come the security has been disabled for a shorter amount of time. This is affected depending on your cyber affinity skill as well as the difficulty you're playing on. This is Xerxes. Can you not feel the glory of the flesh? Do you not yearn to be free of the tyranny of the individual? So this is where the engineering deck starts proper. For a whole lot of players, including myself, this is probably the most terrifying section of the entire game. And I'm not helping manners by the way I'm doing things, but it's not as if I have a choice. You see why I want to put points into energy weapons now? Because I really don't want to have to deal with those maintenance robots the way I'm doing right now. This is not really fun. There is an ability later into the game that allows you to deal with robots in a pretty convenient way, but we're not gonna get it until quite a while. Or we're pretty much gonna have to do huge sacrifices in the terms of abilities and skills. But what makes this part of engineering scary are those crates. They all carry those protocol droids that explode into your face whenever you provoke them. No, I don't want help right now. Thank you very much. So this is how we deal with protocol droids as an OSA agent. You use Pyrofield because this ability gives you the side effect of making you immune to fire damage. And therefore, whenever those robots explode, it deals absolutely no damage whatsoever. Now, who needs help, Protocol Druids? You're not gonna tell me what I need to do. And yeah, when I was talking about this place being pretty expensive later, this is also the part of the game where you'll have to jump on a whole lot of crates in order to get to every single nook and cranny, just in order to make sure that you don't miss any items. There's a lot of things to be seen here. Yeah, we're just gonna make sure here. And in fact, yeah, there's even a turret, and you can also see that our pyro field will protect us against the explosion of the turret. Yep, not even a scratch. If I didn't have this ability, I would have needed a pistol, or at least I will need to run away and... Oh god, okay, Pyrofield does not protect you against crates exploding in your face, though. We're just gonna have to repair the damage really fast. But what makes the protocol druids especially annoying and threatening is that 
this early in the game, you're still gonna have nothing in the means of resources or bullets or anything. And with the standard pistol, killing them will take something like 4 or 5 bullets. Oops, you're truly he's being a little bit reckless right now. Because you know, trying a risky hack and having the crate explode in your face and nuke all of the things inside it is far better than spending 3 or 5 nanites in order to reset the hack. But hey, I guess that you just need a little bit of recklessness in your life in order for you to make things interesting. Security system online. No, fuck this noise, I'm not gonna fall for you, you crates. And this is also where you can see that the pyro field kind of ruins the immersion of the game because it's kind of buggy because whenever you hurt certain things, and that includes for instance those droid crates, they just do random grunts of pain like your character will do. As opposed to you attacking them with pretty much anything else that you want and well, they will not do such things, which is really really weird and it just feels sometimes weird that you're walking around the place and you're just hearing random boxes or parts of the wall saying Ugh! Also, one of the reasons why the cargo bay are so expensive and long to explore is, well, that pretty much all of those rooms have three floors and you have to use those elevators in order to get to the next floor and in order to finally be able to check out all of the places. And this is where things can get rather creepy because, well, first of all, there's all of these bodies that are all over the place and you're not really sure how they died because for the most part, there's no enemies around these parts, except maybe the few occasional monkeys and hybrids. But other than that, eh, you're pretty much feeling alone into this part of the ship. And in order to convey this feeling of loneliness even more, well, you know how come in the past you always had this really audible hum of the ship and the engine all around you? Well, on the engineering deck, you barely hear that hum at all. And finally, you have the music, which is barely heard, and it's just those three chords that repeat over and over again, with all of those synths that just sound like they're in some kind of horror movie. <laughs> At least it's good to see that I'm no longer alone, but that's not really the kind of company that I desire. At least for the most part, the rest of this should be a formality. The hardest part of getting in this cargo bay is to get the access card into the protocol droid hellhole that we went through previously. Other than that, we're pretty much just doing exploration where we're playing along in boxes and we're just gonna play around with monkeys with our wrench. But just as an advice, whenever you're doing this yourself, just make sure that you go in this section first because unless that you're playing as a psionic character, you're probably not gonna have the ammo or the resources to deal with the protocol droids and the last thing that you want is them following you all around the place. The moment that you have the access card, you book it out of here and hope that they don't come around near you. And in fact, you're probably just gonna ask yourself on the harder difficulty, is it worth it to sacrifice some modules in order to buy the pyro field ability? Because you might need those points elsewhere, because abilities will cost far more, and I still can't fathom how you're supposed to do a psionic only run whenever you're playing on impossible. Just taking the most straightforward character ever to the impossible difficulty is quite a feat. It's such an annoying difficulty to play on because, for the most part, there are no mistakes which are accepted. During pretty much the totality of the game, you will only have enough health in order to survive, well, you know, one or two enemy attacks, but not more. All in all, the designers were not kidding when they said that this was an impossible difficulty. Okay, there's no more monkeys which are in the near vicinity, so let's just go listen to the audio logs. A laboratory worker from MedSci called me down to the vivisection room yesterday. He felt the lab chimps were exhibiting uncommon intelligence. I sat with one for four hours and tried to probe it with the Psyamp on a Beta-4 cycle. It failed to respond. I of course assumed it was because it was incapable of reacting to the sophisticated Beta-4 cycle. But then, I realized it was blocking the probe intentionally. As soon as I raised the Psyamp to attack it, 
the creature lashed out with its arms and projected a cryokinetic field towards me, paralyzing my arm. I immediately side dampened the monkey and then stunned it with an electric prod. Taking precautions, I proceeded with further experiments. Since we've reached Tau Ceti, creatures have gotten smarter and somehow gained limited psi abilities. I probed another subject with a Beta-5 cycle and sensed many things, but mostly an incredible empathy. The chimps have become acutely aware of their own history, of the vivisections and experiments that have been performed on them while on board the Von Braun. They have anger, and they are ready to express it. Clearly, they are both a fascinating scientific resource and an incredible security risk. My recommendation? Either freeze them in cryo storage for the remainder of the mission, or liquidate them immediately. Who knows what other abilities they'll acquire. This will be a question that will be answered much, much later in the game. Alright, might as well hear on the side of safety and just disable the alarm, but holy shit, 60%. Even this early in the game, hacking has gotten really, really hard. Who am I gonna click it? No, I'm not. I've wisened up ever since that time. Potential threat detected. Potential threat detected. Kidding, of course. Ah, uh, that monkey is doing the emergency dance. How sweet of him. I think I'm gonna call him Robert. But yeah, let's talk about alarms. Basically, this is the last thing that you'll want to happen to you, because this makes it so that the spawning rate for enemies is increased at ridiculous rates. If you'd go and make an alarm sound while you're simply into the beginning sections of the game, into the hallways of the scientific section of the ship, you probably will die just trying to fend off the waves of zombies that will come right at you. At least I'm at a place of Dolovol where there are no enemies which can spawn, so at least the alarm is doing absolutely nothing for the time being. Right now it's just being background noise. And it's a good thing that the alarm sound for this game is also not really annoying. Now, I could go and just stand here until the alarm runs out, but I probably would be way boring if I did that, so let's just walk all the way back to the command station in order to plan out our next move, because we still have to go into Cargo Bay 2. And in fact, we're gonna make really sure that we will be able to fend off some effects of the alarm by making us go faster. In order to shut off an alarm, you need to run to a security station and use it, but since I failed hacking that terminal earlier, I locked it down and after that you need repair skills in order to make it accessible again. Oh, here comes the welcoming committee from the alarm. If I was standing in the intersection at the beginning of the hallway, I surely would have gotten all of those guys all at once. At least you had a slight idea about the kind of odds that you have to deal with whenever you trigger an alarm, but usually the effects of an alarm will be far more pronounced and finally there'll be way more people, and sometimes you can just find them somewhere else. And here you can see how wonderful Pyro Field is, just in order to take care of a whole lot of hybrids all at once. I really thought at first it was a pretty gimmicky skill, but I'm really warming myself up to it. So here we go, we've made it back to command control, safe and sound, we have the security card in order to open up the way to Cargo Bay 2, and we've had a horrible joke. So all in all, it's a good place to end this update. But before we move on, here are some audio logs that we missed into this update. Stay where you are back, I mean it. This isn't something you can fight, this isn't something you can run from. If you love me, you won't come looking for me. Just hang tight, I won't let you down. There really is a huge disconnect between the first log that we saw of Rebecca as well than this one where pretty much everything went to hell. And here we have the last log that we miss. For some reason I never check out this disc. My duty is to the UNN and to this ship, but can I resist the call of the many? My father's weakness brought Shodan into existence. My weakness has invited these things aboard the Von Braun. Can I undo the wrong I have done? So the captain of the ship indeed got the many aboard the ship, but 
at least he seems to assume his weakness. So that's the end of this update. Coming up next, Cargo Bay 2. <laughs>